So Army has a problem. It's got a lot of equipment coming online, a lot of that's gonna go on soldiers' bodies or into vehicles, and sometimes that gear is gonna have to be integrated between the vehicles or platforms and the soldiers' bodies themselves and their gear. They gotta manage all that power. Lots of batteries, lots of power going a lot of different places to run all this interesting technology. To get after that, the Army has recently selected four companies to provide different types of concepts. So each gonna get about $100,000 each to go after one of their concepts for their particular lane of this technology development. The first one is Aperius. They have a smart power technology platform that provides precision control for smart devices and for different types of electronic charging, power density, and high power efficiency. Another one, Resonant Link, does wireless charging mostly for medical devices and electric fleets. So think electric vehicles out there away from the power grid, but still have to charge things on board, perhaps like an ambulance with a defibrillator or other types of medical equipment. That could come in real handy for a, a field testing or field exercise for a soldier who can't be near a plug-in power supply. Another one is the Spark Thermionics. It basically is creating a quote unquote power plant on a chip. So what it does is it does fuel flexibility um, with all kinds of different sources of fuel to create electric energy, but uses very smart technology and computer chips to manage that power distribution and power generation. Lastly, we have Xerion Advanced Battery. They're basically looking to step change or really have a significant improvement in lithium ion battery uh, use development and durability. Lithium ion batteries are pretty common now. They're basically pretty much all the rechargeable batteries you're going to come across from your smartphone to what's in your radio pack out there in the field. However, they do have some drawbacks and some downsides. They um, are uh, basically vulnerable to aging. They can short circuit in transit. Uh, they also are not quite as robust as some other batteries, although they are um, better in terms of providing higher power and higher voltage. Um, they can heat up. Uh, they can be overcharged or create too much discharge, basically uh, losing life, which is part of the aging process that can be vulnerable uh, to basically wear and tear. And that's a, a big problem with a field exercise or deployment to an actual combat scenario. So while they're still good technology, that company, Xerion Advanced Battery, is looking to improve that technology as we speak. And the efforts they're doing really with these different prototypes and these different concepts is going to help a lot of different areas in the Army. Right now, they have cross-functional teams that are focused on a wide variety of priorities for the Army to modernize, one of which, of course, is social, soldier lethality. Soldier lethality is really focusing on equipment and gear worn by the soldier, on the soldier, used for the soldier individually or in the squad level. Also, you have the, a cross-functional team looking at the network. Basically, how are we going to network and connect all these different devices from a variety of platforms across time zones and have them all sync up? Some of this power distribution is going to be key to that. Also, the uh, C4 ISR, or basically Cyber and Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance you know, groupings, they really have to figure out how to use power effectively to keep loitering drones on station, to communicate effectively, and also to provide power for all new types of platforms coming into the portfolio. One area of improvement that this is also going to apply to that we've reported on before is the adaptive squad architecture. Essentially, it's going to be pretty much what runs all the things on the soldier. It's going to be deciding where power goes, say, to a weapon or to an optic or to a radio, and um, basically managing all that out there in the field. In addition to that, the architecture also contains software applications that will help manage those things and provide information, situational awareness, and whatever the soldier needs in terms of intelligence or data. To get after that, the Army has created Watchtower, which is basically kind of its own little Apple application store just for DoD applications. Basically, developers can create certain types of software applications, put them in the store, and then commanders can kind of pick and choose, pull those down into the platform and see if that works for them, whether they're an airborne unit, an armored unit, or any other kind of armor unit that might need some kind of specific tailored solution within software. So these four companies going after these four areas of technology for the Army Application Lab are essentially going to be folding into some goals that the Army has that are big picture goals but complicated and hard to get to sometimes. And that is essentially giving the soldier an off-grid power source that's reliable, reducing the weight of whatever that soldier is carrying, be it in a vehicle or on their body, and basically making everything more efficient all around. For Military Times, this has been Todd South.